Can you see these guys? They are all sitting here thinking about it, thinking about it, perpetually moving. Uh -huh. And then every once in a while, one of them will go down and get a drink. Did you see that guy yeah. decided to? And now he's going to think about, oh, that one's getting a drink now. I've had these running for a couple weeks. Wow. And sometimes the water evaporates. I have to add just a teeny bit of water, but there are no batteries. There's no power. How do they work? Now, these have been around for a long time. One of the famous stories about Drinking Bird was what happened when someone showed them to Einstein. He was so intrigued. He studied them, he studied them. He thought they were extremely clever, and they are. So let's just think, where's the energy coming from? There's no batteries. Sun isn't shining on, there's no gasoline, there's no magnets. They just keep going. And as long as there's water here, they'll just keep moving. So have we found our perpetual motion machine? It kind of looks like it. It does look like it. <laughs> and in my opinion, this probably comes as close to anything man-made. Now, I like Johnny's rotating earth and yeah, that's things out in space. Too. And there are a lot of objects in the in space that perpetually move, unless you start measuring in billions of years. But uh, I wonder how many of you can uh, figure out how these are actually working. It's a uh, clever guy or gal that knew a lot of science. I actually happened to be a guy that invented this iteration of it. But these go back, uh, the first recorded thing like this that I was able to find uh, is hundreds of years old from China. But let's look how they work. If we go over and, and look at my little drawing here, so we have this glassware that has been made, a bulb on the bottom that we put some of this um, special liquid into. And by the way, it's red because we colored it. Some of them are colored blue. And then we have an, a tube that is, is uh, soldered here, or melted here, and then a little bulb on top. Then around the top bulb is this red stuff. The red coating on here is felt. And if you get the nose wet by dipping it in the water, the water is transported around the whole head, so the whole felt head gets wet. So when he drinks, he's actually making sure that it stays head. If I take away the water, they'll still sit and bob for an hour until all of the felt dries out. As long as the felt is wet, he'll keep, keep dancing. Why? It's fascinating, isn't it? And uh, he keeps it getting wet by going down and dipping in the water. Well, in this next drawing, I'm going to start showing you the magic, the secret of how it works. So the felt up at the top up here is wet. And so he just had a drink. And so that's where we're going to start a cycle. It's all wet. And since it's wet, it evaporates. There's one place the drinking bird will not work, and that is a place where the humidity is 100% because it can't evaporate. So it's got to be normal air, like in, in a home or a building. And so the water's evaporating. When water evaporates, it takes on energy to turn into the gaseous phase, and that cools the felt. So here around this head, we have a phenomenon known as evaporative cooling. Some of you might have lived in a real dry climate like in Arizona or out west, and you can actually put a swamp cooler on top of your house where you just run water over a filter, and as the air goes through it evaporates, and it gets really quite cool. And it's just the heat of vaporization you have to keep putting water in. So that means it's cooling the top. When you cool the top, this gas here cools, and as it cools, 
it contracts and you get a low pressure here because it's cooling. Down here we have a sill, so this gas cannot connect to that except through this liquid. And so this, by comparison, is a high pressure. And little by little, the level of the liquid goes up and up and up until it finally reaches this top and starts filling the top bulb. As the liquid fills the bulb at the top enough, it gets heavy enough to tip it over, okay? So by cooling the top, it draws the liquid up, makes the top heavy. When it gets heavy enough, it goes over and it makes sure it's got enough water. And then in the next slide, we see the real trick. This is when the nose is down drinking, and you'll notice that this part of the tube, the top half, has no liquid, and down here, the bottom of the tube has no liquid. Mm -hmm. So at this point, the gas flows up through here, and the pressure on top becomes the same as the bottom, which then drains all the liquid back down to the bottom, and it stands back up, and the cycle's repeated. Right. Now, it's, it's a little tricky to see this, but these are fun. Everybody ought to have one. If you got $10, you can, you can pick one up. I have asked them to find some for our Cellus store, so you'll be able to get them with your gold. And uh, it's fun to watch it. I can see this one right here, his, his level is clear down here, but it's going up gradually. Mm -hmm. This one, his is already going up into his head, so he's starting to tilt towards the water. It's getting heavier and heavier, and he's thinking about, I will drink, because there's a lot of... <laughs> And, there he goes. and once <laughs> he drinks, you see the bubbles go yeah. through, and lo and behold, they start a new cycle. That is incredibly clever. 